in Lo he was uh, from Los Angeles, Southern California. So he, uh, Paul Revere Williams, that's his name, and his friends called him PR. But uh, so he's a Southern California boy. Paul Williams was a man that was truly before his time. He was the architect of the stars in the early 30s and 40s. When you went to homes in Bel Air and around Southern California, the multi-million dollar homes, a majority of them were designed by Paul R. Williams. Paul Revere Williams was born February 18th, 1894. He was an African American architect who based his practice largely in Los Angeles. Mr. Williams became a certified architect in 1921 and the first certified African-American architect west of the Mississippi. When you also really think about it, this was a gentleman that thought that disruptive thought was something that was going to make a big impact and something that was brought it down to the people in the ground. And he designed the building um, and he couldn't even stay in some of the hotels and in some of the gathering places here because he was in that zone. E.L. Cord brought Paul R. Williams to Nevada. He had uh, built the home for him in Southern California. E.L. Cord, you know, thought so much of it that he urged him to come here. And I think it was after that, it was pretty much word of mouth that he became such a uh, respected architect and everyone wanted to use him. Paul R. Williams is not any different from many other young African-American boys and girls. Um, who said, who had dreams. And Paul R. Williams said, uh, um, I want to be an architect. And he was told that you really shouldn't be an architect. You know, how many people are going to allow you to build their homes for them? He was told that he should be a doctor or a lawyer, therefore he could get business um, with it, within the African-American community. But he saw his talent and his skill, and I think that being told and that he couldn't be an architect is what he says um, just kind of inspired him more to even be, become one. At age 28, he opened his own office. Mr. Williams would draw upside down so its clients wouldn't feel uncomfortable sitting next to a black architect. Um, here in Reno, I think the, the structure that most people see and know is the, the Lear Theater right there off of the Truckee. I feel very fortunate to work for the Lear Theater because it's going to be a really exciting opportunity for the arts in northern Nevada when it gets opened. Uh, the building that we're standing in is originally the first Church of Christ Scientist uh, building and they operated for almost 80 years here. Uh, the Lear Theater purchased the building about 10 years ago, and we're looking to turn it into a com community performance arts venue and do spoken word theater. The Lear Theater was designed in 1938 by Paul Williams. 1998, when the Lear Theater went up for sale, it was purchased with the help of a large donation from Moya Lear. The Lear Theater Coalition was formed and began planning to renovate the old church into a performance venue. Paul's architecture affects the way people look at the Lear Theater today. It's a beautiful structure, but I don't think many people here in Reno know that it was designed by a black man. He was acclaimed as being the first African American to be inducted into the Architects Hall of Fame. Not only this building here, the Lear Theater, he designed other buildings around Reno. And some of them are public, some of them are private, some private homes but truly the most magnificent, magnificent, the one that really shows his architectural style is here at the Lear Theater. I have seen some of his work here in Reno and I have been in the Garvey House on California Street. I did tour the house and there is such magnificent attention to detail. I would say that Paul R. Williams 
had an elegant style about his workmanship and um, just the, uh, the stairway, so the intricate detail on the stairway. Um, curves, quite a few curves back in those days. He was just a wonderful architect and just um, uh, if you have a chance to ever go into and ask, go ask uh, to go into the Garvey house, uh, you would see some of that wonderful attention to detail. Paul's work is evident everywhere you look in the Garvey house. It has so many of William's signature elements, including a grand staircase, and a very artistic use of unique moldings. Well, from what I understand of Paul R. Williams, he had a, a lot of different architectural styles, um, and one of them is what's prevalent here in the Lear Theater. His design for this building is called neoclassical, and it has the big columns, the architectural style, even though it was a church, and a church of simple means, church that wasn't real gaudy or ostentatious, it's still a design that stands out with um, very significant features like the, the pillars out in the front portico in the entryway. Um, those are the pieces of the design that we're gonna keep um, that will stay here even when it turns into a theater because it really represents uh, a time and a place in Reno during the birth of that kind of uh, architecture. It was a time of uh, racism in, in the United States and uh, uh, especially here in northern Nevada, even when the time when the, in the when he was designing these homes here in uh, Reno, um, segregation existed. He wasn't allowed to uh, stay. He couldn't stay in a hotel here in Reno at that time. He would have to stay in the homes in private homes. Uh, that's how segregated and uh, racist uh, Reno was in those years. So. He wasn't allowed to live in these neighborhoods, um, but he was allowed, because of his talent, to build these magnificent structures. Paul Revere Williams won many awards, including the Omega Sci-Fi Man in 1951. And in 1953, Williams received the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP. In 1939, he won the AIA Award of Merit for his design of the MCA building in Los Angeles, now headquarters for the Linton Industries. During World War II, Williams worked for the Navy Department as an architect. In 1945, after the war, he published his first book, The Small Home of Tomorrow. And the next year, he published another one, New Homes for Today. In 1957, he became the first African American to be voted an AIA Fellow. He built these fabulous homes for the stars, uh, as um, Desi Arnaz Jr., Lucille Ball, um, the automobile magnet E.L. Cord. You know, as they moved west, they wanted to have these beautiful, elaborate homes, and um, they didn't see color. You know, they just wanted, they saw his style, they saw his talent, and uh, so they wanted to have the, that uh, which he was gifted with. And so they, he was the architect to the stars because of his skill. Well, I think that there were several things that he did that he's noted for, um, especially the restaurant at the, um, the Los Angeles International Airport. I grew up in Los Angeles. I lived in LA as a young child, and I remember the first time I went to that restaurant uh, in that wonderful dome-shaped uh, sphere that's at the Los Angeles International Airport. I think that that was one thing. He also uh, designed the, the uh, UN United Nations building in Paris. So he became internationally known. And um, I think that those are some of the, the structures that solidified him as, a, as an, an architect. The Los Angeles International Airport was built in 1928. Now, Paul's spider-shaped building stands right next to the control tower. Paul Williams designed this restaurant in the early 1960s. Everyone in Los Angeles thought the future would just be like the Jetsons. 
hall's building was recently refurbished, and now the interior has a retro 60s look. Well, he was the first um, African American who was part of the, uh, the American Architects uh, Association. Uh, but in those years, I mean, there, he was one of very few architects, black African American architects in the country, probably in the, in the, in the nation, in the world. There weren't that many black architects. Uh, so he was breaking down barriers when he was building all of these wonderful homes and structures. Yes, he did have a family. I know he had a daughter, uh, Karen, uh, and he, had a he has a granddaughter who's still alive today. I don't remember his, his daughter's name, but yes, he did have a family and he was married. But he did travel quite a bit, and so I'm not quite sure of this, the relationship that he had really with his family. Paul Revere Williams designed more than 2,000 private homes. Most of the private homes Paul Williams worked on were in Los Angeles, California. Paul Revere Williams had a style that no other architect had. Whether it's a private home or a public building, Williams had his own way of making traditional designs and making them modern.